Um, one of the most exciting things about Denver Seeds, I think, and after hearing this information about urban agriculture, I just feel more enthusiastic um, than I normally do, um, is um, that we started this idea out of the campaign. And so when you start an idea in a campaign, you are absolutely dedicated to making sure that it comes to life. So Arthur and I were uh, working on the campaign. He was doing policy and I was doing community outreach. I actually ran Northwest Denver um, and Latino outreach and sustainability outreach. And so as we were defining and really looking at what uh, Michael Hancock would run on, we thought we would really look deeply into sustainability at the local level and say, where can we make the biggest impact? Where can we support? Where can we augment? And where can we really create the kind of change that the community is asking for? And if you know Michael at all, that is exactly the kind of person that he is, is to really listen deeply to what's going on to the community and then try to, try to um, come up with some solutions. So the idea behind Denver Seeds really is to augment and support the local food system urban agriculture, and there are so many incredible activities going on around the city of Denver. We really recognize it as a very complex food system. It's not a complicated system, it's very complex. And so therefore, it really is going to take not just solution-oriented goals, but really recognizing that it is the bringing together of community, looking at policies, and really being a part of that journey. We really recognize that taking the spotlight out of City Hall and turning it into the community is absolutely imperative for this movement to be the movement. And we recognize also that without really looking at the economic argument for urban agriculture, we may be missing the boat. So Denver Seeds is really dedicated to growing jobs from plant to plate. And so how do you really do that? What does that really mean? We recognize after all of these, um, the presentation that you've seen that you really kind of have a more, a bigger understanding now of urban agriculture. But the one piece that we really feel is missing is really helping to define, again, that economic argument. So some of the components in uh, growing plant to plate um, is really about uh, production. Let's see how this goes, sorry. Sorry, there we go, okay. There we go. So production. The total value of all agricultural products in Denver County is well under a tenth of 1% of the total value of all food consumed. So clearly, this is an economic opportunity for job growth and industry growth. If we can shift our local food economy from a tenth of 1% to 25%, that's a tenth of 1%, to 25% lo 25 local food production, what does that shift look like and what does that, that incorporate? That looks like production, transportation, processing, food access, and waste. And in each of these components, we see the potential of local job growth and local sector development. So why local? Why food localization? Mayor Hancock noticed that there was a big opportunity here in Denver to push this economic growth that uh, Kenya was talking about. There was a study found that in 2008, Denver residents spent $6 billion on food. However, Denver Farms only produced 10% of that. So $5.4 billion left the Denver and Colorado economy. That's a huge amount of money. And what this is is called economic leakage. And the concept behind that is when money is spent on out-of-state companies, the profits, the savings, the taxes, the jobs, they leave the region and this reduces the available money in the local economy. Exacerbating this problem is that it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Take for instance this 5.4 billion. If this 5.4 billion was spent in Colorado and Denver, it would not be worth 5.4. It would be actually somewhere around the neighborhood of 19 billion. And this is because of the local multiplier effect. It is well studied and well documented that one dollar spent in the local economy circulates 3.5 times more than money spent out of state. So there's obviously this leaky bucket. There's obviously money leaving the city and the state. So how do we plug that hole? How do we keep dollars local? And it's Denver Seeds, Kendra, the mayor, and I's vision that we have to grow the jobs where they're most needed. So where are those jobs most needed? Those jobs really are most needed in the overlaid areas that you see here as the, defined as food deserts. 
Now, food deserts have very difficult access, very limited access to grocery stores. So some folks in these areas need to take buses, two to three buses to get there. And you can imagine if you're at home with two or three kids getting on a bus to get your groceries home every day, that it's a very difficult task. Oftentimes, these folks end up shopping at little tiny stores. Um, Cheetos and Pepsi are a very consistent diet for people who live in these neighborhoods, and we really want to aim at helping that. There's a lot of groups around the city who are focusing on that. We are, again, focusing on how we can support the economic argument behind that. So some of these neighborhoods are our neighborhoods. These neighborhoods are Colfax neighborhood in Sun Valley. This is Glowville, Elyria, and Swansea. This is Cole, Clayton, and Skyland. This is North Park Hill. This is Montbello. This is East Colfax, Ruby Hill, and Overland. So as you can see, these, all of these areas are in various city council districts. They, they don't lay in any one particular area, but really, again, the overlaying of the lack of jobs and the lack of food insecure areas are, is really essential to understand. The number of food insecure people in these areas, in Denver alone, it's 82,588 people. In the metropolitan area, it's close to 105,000 people. That total number of people is almost 188,000 people. So some of the, the ways that we are supporting the, uh, the uh, urban ag that's happening in the area, is, it's, it's very multifaceted, from looking at how we can change zoning to how we can help with permitting to how we can look at food safety requirements, how can we get markets started, who can we partner with. If we partner with Denver Foundation and Piton and, and Dr. Cog and um, Botanic Gardens. I mean, there's, there's several people on our task force in this room, and I know many of you in this room um, just from working in sustainability, so I know you understand the scope is truly systemic. And some of the specific projects that we're working on, um, we have partnered with the Denver Housing Authority and Circle Fresh Farms to create what is called the Veterans of Farmers Greenhouse. Um, this is happening at Curtis Ballpark neighborhood at 24th and Tremont. Um, the whole idea there is to grow a 10,000 square foot greenhouse with an attached market that will act as a veterans vocational training center. We are also working on. Um, one of the things we really, is this market development. We're looking at these food insecure areas to help secure funding. So a lot of these local producers have a market that can sell what they're growing. And? Um, we're also looking at what's called food hub feasibility studies. A food hub is um, a facility that aggregates local produce, um, processes it, and distributes it. And so what we're looking at is what Denver neighborhoods would anchor these types of facilities that would be best utilize for this economic impact. And? Um, we're also looking to develop a large production and food hub uh, facility out on DIA land called the Agro Park. And um, one of the one of my uh, favorite uh, projects that we're working on is uh, to develop at the sheriff's department at the county jail an aquaponics center that will be attached to a greenhouse, so they can sell or you know feed their inmates and hopefully scale it to be able to sell it. One of the most exciting parts is that the facility out there has so much potential that we're hoping to build one of the first fish processing plants, not in just Denver, but in the Colorado region. And so why are we doing this? What is the point of this? So the point are the benefits to our local food network. So we're really talking a lot about the economic benefits. But we know that people are working very difficultly and very, very diligently on the environmental benefits. And we also know folks are working on the social benefits. But right here in the center is where those come together and where we see that true sustainable triple bottom line. That is where we're really going to see the job growth and we're going to see definable job growth that is long lasting. So what does success look like to Denver Seeds? Success looks for us that all these other organizations who are on the ground are successful. So we want those organizations to be able to grow. We want them to be able to grow larger. We want them to be able to grow jobs. We want them to be able to grow food. We want them to be able to grow markets. We want them to be able to grow local food economy. We want them to be able to teach. We want our citizens to know, to learn how to thrive in a local food economy. And we want to feed. We want these organizations and we want the city of Denver to be able to feed and nourish Denver residents through behavior and cultural change. 
So what is that path to success and how are we going to get there? So right now, like what we just talked about, we've been supporting a lot of these projects. But another key aspect to pushing this movement forward is to really understand the numbers behind it, to really understand what a 25% shift to localization really means. And so one of the first things we've done is to uh, contract with a consultant, his name's uh, Michael Schumann out of Bali, which is the Business Alliance for Local Living Economies, to study this, to look into this. He's done similar studies for Detroit, Cleveland, and Boulder, and, he, and we just finished the one here in Denver, and what he found was, if we shift to 25%, that this would create 4,000 jobs here in Denver, 25,000 jobs regionally, and create approximately $1 billion in economic activity. This is over 10 years. And this, these type of numbers put one out of seven unemployed people back into the job market, into the local economy, into spending money here in Denver, here regionally. So the numbers that, that Arthur just gave you have not been released yet. We haven't actually put out um, a press release on that. We will do that in the next couple months, but just to be really transparent about the process that we're undergoing, we recognize that looking at a local shift of 25% food production really could have an impact on the local economy, and large agribusiness may not be very happy about that, especially at the municipal level and being wrung out of the mayor's office. So what we're trying to do is really gather enough data and information and really build our partnerships at the local and regional level so that we together are able to define and show how this 25% shift is really going to occur. So we have a couple of other studies that are going to happen this year. One is actually working with Wendy. And um, what we'll be doing there is looking at a community food assessment. And what the community food assessment is, is it takes a snapshot of exactly what the food system looks like today. So who's producing what? Where are they producing it? Uh, who's, who is um, processing what? And where are they processing it? And how are they distributing this kind of food? What are they distributing? So that we can really start to identify truly what it looks like right now. The other study that we'll be doing this year is called a supply-driven study. And the supply-driven study will go into three of these neighborhoods. We're going to prototype it this year, and we're going to do Glowville, Elyria, Swansea over in the Westwood area and also over in um, Ballpark. And what we'll be doing is using the residents who live in those neighborhoods to be able to go into their neighborhoods and focus groups or door-to-door, -door, figuring out some of the answers to both of these survey questions so that then we can compile all of that information along with this data that we got about the demand side study and be able to then prove this economic point and then next year in 2013 really be able to decide and define an, a sustainable economic development plan. So with these studies and with this consolidation of data, we really recognize that this plan for the 25% shift will be able to be created. So. In closing, we want you to recognize all of the amazing things that are going on in community and recognize that you really are the answer to these things, the people who are growing the food and have the chickens and have the goats and have the bees, the people who are pioneering the way and really coming up with the ideas and the ways that we work together to make this happen. But we also want you to understand that the efforts are very disparate and that the reason that Denver Seeds is here is to put a big umbrella over that and to help pull all of that together so that we can be successful. We can grow jobs and we can truly shift the economy by not just looking at a food system, but truly looking at a food economy. Thank you.